observations by the simple particle method, we get a greater sense of the fact that something is actually there, which was missing in other, other two methods. This method also helps when we get into more complicated reactions. Let's go back to that second reaction that we looked at, which was hydrogen reacting with nitrogen to produce ammonia. Now, tapping into the smarter part of our brain, which is a little more artistic and we think in pictures, not in paragraphs, we have to couch everything in this language and so it's easier to think in pictures and I think for those that struggle with this, um, they'll enjoy this method a lot more. So, all you gotta do is draw circles of different colors for different elements or different compounds. And so we look at our hydrogen, I just gotta erase that little dot, thank you. And we need two of those. So we're going to clone that. So there's H2, okay, a molecule of hydrogen. Nitrogen, also diatomic, is N2. So we'll just go like that. There it is there. Now, we got to build ourselves an ammonia molecule. So we're going to clone that. So we only need one there. And we need three hydrogens here. So we'll clone these guys over here. And uh, you can go there. And you can go there. And we'll throw in them an extra one in there for good measure and send him to the back or let's bring this one up front. Okay, much prettier. Okay, so we've got ourselves one simple particle drawing of each of our substances, both products and reactants. And we can see that it looks like somehow a hydrogen formed out of nowhere because we went from having two to three. And it also seemed like we went from having two blue circles to only having one. And we know from the law of conservation of mass that matter can't be created nor destroyed. So what the heck happened? Well, in this method, it's quite easy. What we do is we just simply add more of each until everybody's balanced. So if I duplicate that, then my blues are okay. And now we can go back over to the white ones, the hydrogens, and so we know now that we need more of these, so we're gonna clone those how many times? Well, two, of course. And that's gonna give us a nice even keel ratio. So three molecules of hydrogen react with one molecule of ammonia, and that produces two molecules of ammonia over here. I might have said that wrong. Two, three molecules of hydrogen react with one molecule of nitrogen, producing two molecules of ammonia. And it's not hard then to go to the idea that we've got these things called moles. So we could say three moles of hydrogen react with one mole of nitrogen, producing two moles of ammonia. And looking at these pictures, it becomes much clearer how three plus one actually will produce two. Just counting it from the moles, well, that's hard to see. And so I think this method is good for that, but it is still limited in its way um, because it actually doesn't show you what's really happening in chemistry. If I asked anybody how many hydrogens are there in this system, they would actually probably say a total of 12. 6 plus 6 is 12. If I asked them how many nitrogens there are in this system, they would say 4. 2 plus 2 is 4 or two plus one plus one is four. Well, in reality, this is inherently wrong. Yes, it does help us get to a nice even ratio and it's visually appealing and a heck of a lot more fun than, an, than that boring accounting method. Um, it ties us into the molarity stuff pretty well, but the problem is, is that it doesn't really convey what's truly going on in a chemical reaction. You'll have to go to my next video to see that.